Hello and welcome to this part of the FAST tutorial series. In this video I'm going to be discussing how we can correct or validate tracks after we've generated using the tracking module. So in today's tutorial I'm going to be using this dataset that I took off uh, YouTube which just shows some cells um, dividing starting from two and then progressing up to a larger microcolony. And I've already processed this using FAST um, up to the tracking stage, so I've done segmentation with feature extraction, um, and this is the result of the tracking processing. So you can see here that we have this nice track length distribution. There's a large peak in the center, which indicates that we have some sort of characteristic time scale of division, which is a good sign. That suggests that we've got most of these tracks correct. But if we look up here at the trackability um, score, you can see that there are these points where the trackability really falls down low. And these are the times at which um, the cell division is happening within the data set. Um, and something about FAST is it's not really designed to be used with this number of cells, so only two or three or four. Um, and the fact that it drops this low is also because uh, there isn't enough information for FAST to make accurate um, training decisions. So you'll see that we have some mistakes in the tracking uh, at these early stages. Um, but on the other hand, having a small number of cells means that we can correct by hand fairly easily. So I'll just move through into the validation or correction module. Uh, and after you click this button, you should see this window appear. And uh, this contains basically two main elements. There's the frame selection um, panel which allows you to scroll through the different frames in the movie and assess uh, how the tracking was. You can also edit it by text. And then you have these editing options, so you can have fuse or cut, um, or uh, these are the two different modes, and then enact, which allows you to uh, apply the specified modification to the track. So I'll start off in the fusion module um, and we'll just scroll through this image and see where we need to fuse some tracks. Okay, so here's a good example. So you can see that we have these cyan cells highlighted. That indicates that we're at the end of a track for these cells. Um, and then if we move to the next frame, you can see that we have this orange cell highlighted. That indicates that we're at the start of a track uh, for another cell. So basically we have one cell that stops too early and another one that starts too late. Sorry, one track that starts stops too early and another that starts too late. So we want to fuse these two together. So to do that, we just um, click on the cyan cell that we uh, to the end of the track that we want to fuse the end of. Uh, scroll through to the next time frame and click on the um, cell that we want to fuse to and then we click an act. And you see that the cell outline disappears, which tells us that the track has been continued across those two time points. We can go back to the previous time point as well and see that the cyan outline has disappeared. We can repeat that as well for this cell um, and see that that is now healed that particular time point, which was faulty. Uh, and we can continue scrolling through and we see that we have this other cell, um, which has a mistake uh, in it as well. So we click next there. This is an interesting example here. You can see that we have the end of a track in cyan here, but also that we have this dark orange line in the middle. What that's telling us is that in the next frame, the cell is divided into two. So this is the point where the, tr the um, tracks do not need to be corrected because there are two daughter cells in the next time point, but one mother cell in the previous time point. So it's accurate that those trajectories should be broken. So we can skip over that particular cell. And I'm just going to go through and uh, continue manually correcting these uh, fusion events. OK, so I've just spotted um, a good point to make at this um, time. So normally when you see cell division taking event, you can see that we have this nice cyan outline at the time point before, indicating the end of the previous track and then this nice dark orange line in between, indicating that at the next time point, you have these two separate cells. Um, but in this case, at time point 106, you can see that we have these two cells appearing without any corresponding sign outline. Um, we go through, so this is where the uh, two cell tracks are beginning. 
and then we go through to 108 and that's where you see the cyan outline appearing. And this is basically a case where um, you have segmentation of the two daughter cells uh, at this time point, but then they refuse in the segmentation algorithm uh, to generate the original um, cell again. So this trajectory um, kind of the mother trajectory overlaps to a certain extent with that of the daughters. So this is correct and the, the division detection algorithm will deal with this um, but just a warning that if you don't see something that looks quite like these prototypical divisions not to be too worried and to just um, take a moment and think whether or not what you're seeing in later time points um, matches what you expect. And just before I um, finish this section off, I've just seen another example that I should probably point out. So you'll sometimes see these cases where you have this dash cyan and orange outline. And what this is telling you is that this um, object, or sorry, this track, um, is only a single time point long, which means there's only a single object associated with it. And that object is both the start and the end of the track, which is why it's both colours. So usually I don't worry about these objects. These are usually things that have just missegmented. Um, but again, it's just something to be aware of. There are certain situations where you might want to link this to another object, in which case you can treat it as either a cyan or an orange object during the fusion uh, setup. Okay, so I've finished the fusion correction part of the process. So um, that means that we've completed this mode. We're now going to move over to the cut mode. Um, and just to motivate why we have to have this mode, um, this is an example of an event, uh, a, a tracking um, event that cannot be corrected using the fusion module alone. So you can see there's this object that looks remarkably like a cell just after the division that appears suddenly, but there's no corresponding um, sister cell over here. There's also no corresponding mother cell in the previous time point. And if we switch to the cut mode, we can see exactly why that's happened. You can see that we have this large mother cell um, that has been assigned to one of its daughters. And that's what this arrow represents. That indicates the motion um, associated with the current track. So if we move to the next time point, you can see that it's associated with this mother and uh, associated with this daughter, sorry. And if I now just re-roll the colours, just to make it a bit clearer, hopefully this will work, you can see that this is the same object, but this daughter is separate. So that's telling you that this track um, moves to here, but this is a separate track. So what we need to do is we need to cut this track at this time point where the division takes place. To do that, we just cut, um, click on the mother cell, we click enact, and then it's done. So that's cut the track into two separate parts, one corresponding to the mother, and one corresponding to the daughter. And if we click over to the fuse module again, you can see that we have this nice archetypal division type event. So we have this nice cyan outline with a dark orange band in the middle. So I'll just continue going through uh, in the cut module, finding events that need to be um, cut, and I'll get back to you shortly. Okay, so that's the cutting finish. That was a lot quicker than the fusion uh, correction stage. Um, but that's the correction finished now completely. So that's taken maybe um, 10 minutes in total. I did have to take a break in the middle due to some uh, mistakes that I made in the video preparation. So you'll see that the timestamp in the bottom right hand corner does change a little bit. But overall it took about 10 minutes. So to save the results of that manual correction, um, we can just close down the um, correction GUI and we can see that this track distribution um, has changed, uh, which tells you that it's reprocessed the data and saved it properly. Um, and that's uh, the reprocessing done completely. You can also come back to the validation stage if you need to, just by clicking validate again, and it will reload the new data. So you can see, for example, we no longer need to do that initial fusion stage. We no need, longer need to fuse these two cells together, which were previously um, split apart. So uh, basically you can break this into multiple different um, sessions if you like. Anyway, we'll just close that down again. And uh, the next stage is division detection, which we will cover in the next video.